Galadriel in Rings of Power should have been an easy sell. How did Amazon snatch defeat from the jaws of victory? And how did they turn one of the more beloved characters in Lord of the Rings into one of the more disliked characters? If not the most disliked character? Well, I'm certainly not here to share my cookie recipe, so uh, I guess we're going to try and answer that question. How about we start by taking a look at the actor who portrayed Galadriel, Mordavith Clark, who's famous for appearing in things such as... Oh! Pride and Prejudice! A classic! The, uh... Oh, wait, no. Uh... Oh. Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. Oh. Oh, no. I don't remember Jane Austen writing about zombies, but, uh... I'm sure it's very good. Or, or not. Now, although having an incredibly Anan Hergoyle, or incredibly Welsh name, Morvith, uh, and yes, that is actually how that, roughly, how that word is pronounced, and yes, it is a real word. For those who don't know, English is spoken throughout the British Isles, but uh, in Wales, 30% of the population have decided to speak complete gibberish to one another, known as Welsh, my family included. Now you might be thinking, come now, Johnny, that sounds a little bit harsh to me. Surely it's not that bad. Well, if you ever have the pleasure of visiting Wales, and I don't mean that sarcastically, if you do ever have the pleasure of visiting Wales, it is a wonderful place, uh, you'll notice that uh, a lot of the road signs are written in both Welsh and English. Uh, here's an example. Now, don't worry, the person writing this sign was not beaten to death with their own keyboard towards the end there, but uh, th this is just what the Welsh language looks like. Anyway, despite having an incredibly Welsh name, Morfith was actually born in Sweden, which might help to explain why her face doesn't appear to move. It was left frozen stiff by the icy Scandinavian tundra. Now, do I dislike Morfith Clark? No, I mean, I don't know her, but, I mean, that doesn't really matter. But from what I've seen from her in Rings of Power, do I believe that she's an incredibly competent actor? Possibly not, no. You know, she's very one-dimensional, very stiff, uh, lacks any sense of charisma or gravitas, and a paraplegic face ultimately limits her ability to convey any form of emotion. And whenever we're unfortunate enough to witness her attempt to convey any form of emotion, it looks as though the, the director is stood just off shot, just jabbing her with a cattle prod. Okay, so if she's, you know, not, not maybe the greatest actor, then why was she cast? Well, in some cases, People are cast not because, you know, not necessarily just down to their acting prowess, but more so how they look. Uh, this is often a, a casting technique when you're looking to uh, cast an older or a younger rendition of uh, a pre-existing character. Now that's not to say as long as you look enough like a character, you don't have to have any acting ability whatsoever, but it does help to compensate. Take, uh, you know, like uh, Lily Potter from Harry Potter, the young child. She didn't need to be Marlon Brando. She just needed to look enough like Lily Potter, and she did. And it was a great casting. But even then, I don't think that's what's happened here because, you know, I, it's entirely subjective, but personally, I don't see it. I don't believe that she looks like Kate Blanchett's uh, Galadriel, really. I can't imagine the casting crew sitting there thinking, do you know what? Yeah, she, she looks enough like Kate Blanchett's Galadriel. We can forgive a slight uh, deficit in acting ability because ultimately, you know, the, the fact that she looks more like her will help to serve the story much more than a lack of ability will undermine it. Ultimately, the point I'm trying to make is a lack of acting ability is sometimes forgivable the more you look like a character. But, like I say, I don't think that's what's happened here, but maybe that's just me. Maybe you think she does look like Kate Blanchett's Galadriel. Okay, so she doesn't quite have the skill and she doesn't really look like the previous rendition of Galadriel. So uh, we're back to the same question. Why was she cast? And I think it plays into uh, a theory I will be explaining in another video, and this is to do with money, because there is something incredibly fishy going on with uh, the money surrounding the show, some of the numbers we've been hearing, it just doesn't add up. But like I said, I'll be covering that in a bit more detail in an upcoming video. I would also like to mention, and I can't remember where I first heard this, but uh, at one point Murphy did an interview where she mentioned that she had to go through therapy in order to do some of the action scenes, because apparently lots of people with prop swords was intimidating. Now, mental health is no joke. If you require therapy, I strongly recommend that's what you do. However, if you're putting yourself in positions where you require therapy in order to deal with the emotions that come with that position, then, well, congratulations. Not only do you have mental health issues, but you're also an idiot. Let me give you an example. I have severe anxiety, and because of that, I can't do various things. Like, uh, I, can't, I can't go on flights, for example. So I would make a terrible pilot. If you require therapy to do your job, maybe that job isn't for you. If you require therapy to be an actor, may maybe just don't be an actor. Is, there, <laughs> is that a crazy suggestion? Regardless, do I believe that the failure of Galadriel solely lands on the shoulders of Morvith Clark? No, certainly not, because a character on film is of self and service. And by that, I mean, 
when you see a character on screen, it is, it's, it's not just that actor, it's an amalgamation of that actor, the director, costume, makeup, anyone on that set or production that has had any kind of input into how that character looks, appears, sounds. It's a group effort. Faults within a film or production as a result of any one person or department can more often than not be traced back to the director because ultimately it's their responsibility to oversee the whole project. Now, in the same way that if a football team underperforms, it's the manager that will take the heat, even if they didn't physically take part in the game because, well, that's their responsibility. But I don't care whose fault it is, I don't care who gets blamed, I'm just going to be explaining some of the faults that contributed to the misfire that is the Rings of Power's Galadriel in terms of production, starting with the makeup. Now, uh, we're, we're treated to many close-up shots of Galadriel's face, including other lots, you know, shots of her staring intensely at various things. And this has given us a good opportunity to get a good look at her very full and very obvious face of makeup that she adorns throughout this first season. Now, this is not film makeup. This isn't like, you know, to even skin tones, reduce shine, and to ultimately go unnoticed by the audience makeup. No, this is intentional. And I can only imagine whoever did this is actually a qualified plasterer and not actually a makeup artist. But boo-hoo, Galadriel's wearing makeup, what's the big deal? But um, it kind of is, uh, you know, because it displays a fundamental misunderstanding of the character. In this case, an immortal elf who has seemed to have surpassed all in terms of beauty, except the fact that she wears eyeshadow. Her hair is said to glow with the light of the two trees, except it just doesn't. That is, unless you're talking about the sickly yellow hue that radiates from the windows of the pub down the road, the two trees, in which case, yeah, I mean, I can see that. Generally, people wear makeup in order to cover up flaws or to make themselves appear more traditionally good looking. Hey, I'm not saying it always works, but why would a beautiful, ethereal, immortal elf have any interest in doing this? It, it just, it doesn't suit the character and it grounds her in reality in a way that it shouldn't. All of a sudden, you've gone from looking at the Lady of Light to looking at a lady that looks like she drinks Miller Light. You're looking at a normal person. Be real, how many of you who've, who've watched Rings of Power straight up just forgot that she was an elf? Because she just blends in with all the Numenorians or the Southlanders? I know I did. Next up is the writing. Now I hear some of you saying, what writing? And oh, that's a good point. But we're going to be taking a look at how and why the character was written. And we're going to start with how. And I believe this to be one of the, one of the character's biggest shortcomings. And this is that the character's personality desires, motives, are all fundamentally flawed and morally ambiguous, yet presented as strengths and positive traits. The writers want you to see Galadriel as intelligent and calculated, but she's often unnecessarily hostile, she often uh, talks down to or belittles other characters, traits that are often present in people who are sat comfortably upon Mount Stupid. They want you to see Galadriel as independent and strong, which are good traits when used for the right reasons. However, her motives are entirely selfish and vengeful and come to such a point in one scene that she comes across as just straight up genocidal. As worthy of the breath of life and just as worthy of her own. And even if it takes me all of this age, I vow to eradicate every last one of you. I will whisper in your piked ear that all your offspring are dead. She often resorts to verbal and emotional manipulation to get what she wants. She has little regard for the thoughts and feelings of the characters around her, particularly those who she seems to see as beneath her, which coincidentally is everyone. When you take a second and subject this character's actions and words to an ounce of scrutiny, you very quickly realize that this character is just simply nasty, evil, which would be fine if they didn't prop her up uh, as, as this idol, as this driving force behind this show. Look, look at this character and how good this character is while actually showing you the complete opposite. Also the, the warrior Galadriel, the warlord Galadriel, I mean, this has been covered many times by many people, so I won't go too deep into it, but it is still worth mentioning that the writers of this show fundamentally changed who Galadriel is as a character. Whether this is out of a lack of respect for Tolkien, the source material, or the fans of that source material, or all three, I'm not sure, but Galadriel was just fine before. Beloved, in fact. She was powerful before, but she was powerful up here. So she didn't need to resort to any kind of physical power. Like I say, this has been this has been mentioned many times, but simply giving a female character what are seen to be male traits it is not how you create a powerful female character. It's just lazy and ignorant. Now with the character of Galadriel, Tolkien had teed up Amazon so nicely. Better than anyone else possibly could have. All they needed to do was swing the club and show that ball the meaning of haste but instead, they turned round and beat Tolkien to death with that proverbial golf club. 
Fun fact, Kate Blanchett's rendition of Galadriel saw approximately 17 minutes of screen time over all six of Peter Jackson's movies. That's the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbits. And that goes up to 19 and a half minutes if you count the extended cuts. This Galadriel, Rings of Power Galadriel, saw that same screen time just within the first episode. And yes, I, I did count. Uh, now, this statement doesn't mean anything. I'm just, I'm just, just putting it out there. Now, I'm sure you're well aware that Galadriel's husband Celeborn was not present in uh, season one of Rings of Power, and that's because they've decided he's dead, even though in the canon he's very much alive. And as far as I'm aware, it was never actually written that he died at all. But uh, there we go. Anything's uh, possible with Amazon. But what purpose does killing him off serve? Uh, and the answer to that question is, well, Galadriel gets to retain her agency which is just ridiculous because any normal person knows that just because you're in a relationship with someone does not mean you give up your title of individual person and doesn't mean you're subservient to that partner, but welcome to 2022, I guess. So why did they change Galadriel as a character and why did they make her abrasive and dislikable? Well, I'm sure it wasn't intentional, but uh, if anything, that's more concerning. In my opinion though, it's, it's transparent. At no point did they care about the works of Tolkien. At no point did they care about the character of Galadriel. They just wanted to repurpose an already loved character in order to Trojan horse identity politics. And hey, if you wanna share your own ideas and your own beliefs through characters, cool. Go get your own characters. Go write your own shit. It's as simple as that. Don't take something that a group of people love, change that thing, offer it back to them, and then when pressed about why you did that, then turn around and call those fans patently evil. I just don't think that's the best way to go about it. Just because of a handful of internet troglodytes, you want to label everyone who's got criticism to level at your show patently evil. I mean, try talking to people. Try talking to the audience. Try talking to the Tolkien fans and finding out why they're not happy with what you're doing, rather than simply just trying to invalidate their criticism. So, in summary, uh, bad casting, uh, bad acting, bad writing, uh, they changed the character fundamentally for the worst. Uh, bastardized and generally uh, disrespected law. I know that the showrunner said back to the book, back to the book, back to the book, but I can only assume the book that they're talking about is, I don't know, Cat in the Hat, because it certainly wasn't written by Tolkien or any relative thereof. Uh, and insufferable and unjustified attitudes and behaviours towards other characters, showing a complete lack of self-awareness in the writing room. And lastly, her shitting face doesn't shitting move. That'd do it. This Galadriel for me perfectly embodies the, the zeitgeist of modern entertainment, and that is hollow out something loved, remove everything that is, uh, you know, of, of entertaining quality or creative merit, insert your own opinions and beliefs, and congratulations, you've got something that the old fans hate, and something that potentially new fans just won't care about that much. But there will be a handful of people on Twitter saying, yes, King, go off. And what was the cost? Only a beloved franchise. But it's entirely subjective, I guess. Maybe you enjoyed this rendition of Galadriel, and if you did, I'd very much like. To, and I don't mean I don't mean this sarcastically. I would very much like to hear why uh, you you liked this rendition of Galadriel. So please let me know down in the comments. But to everyone else, you patently evil bigots, like and subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. And as always, a big shout out to the top tier members who are more kind and generous as they are wealthy, it would appear. Posamon and Flunky, your your generosity really does know no bounds. So thank you very much. Tier 2 members, Steve the Goat, Dr. Melski, Saeed, MG Virgil, Brennus, Mark Maidens, and Kuno Saka. Kuno, welcome to uh, Tier 2, by the way. And Mark Maidens you, has offered me an unbelievable amount of support behind the scenes, so I did want to give you uh, an extra shout out as well. Also, of course, a big thank you to the Tier 1 members as well. I really couldn't do it without you guys, so thank you very much. Y your help is, is it's, it's, it's unbelievable. Thank you. And there we go, another video. And like uh, one of my favourite scientists used to say, uh, the universe don't be like it is, but it do. Uh, and there we go. Until the next time, guys, I look forward to seeing you. But until then, take care.